So bendable concrete is very much like normal concrete. Uh, it looks and feels like normal concrete. It has all the good stuff, good properties of normal concrete, such as, for example, it's very formable in the different shapes. It's um, not rusting like steel. Uh, it's very good in compression and so on and so forth. All the good stuff that normal concrete carries are also in bendable concrete. What is different um, from normal concrete is that bendable concrete, as its name suggests, um, is that it's bendable, in meaning that when you put a lot of load on it, instead of fracturing into pieces, uh, it deforms and so very much, very much like metallic material. So if I can demonstrate with a paper clip, okay. So this is a paper clip. Let me bring that close to the camera. Um, um, it, it's steel, steel, of course. So if I bend a little bit, it uh, pull the clip uh, edge out. It bounces back. So this is elastic behavior. But if I put a lot of load on it and it permanently deforms, it doesn't fracture, but it still carry load, uh, it permanently deformed. Okay, so that's plastic yielding. Now, normal concrete cannot do that. If you bend it to this amount, fracture, fracture into two pieces. Bendable concrete can deform its shape, uh, like this one here is a bent to a little bit out of shape. Uh, it's no longer straight etched, um, but it doesn't fracture into pieces. It has both functions of self-sealing and self-recovery of mechanical properties. So if you load that material again, that structure again, it can carry as much load as before. And if I just spell out the ingredients, most of them are actually very similar to normal concrete ingredients, with the exception, as I mentioned, that um, there are well-designed fibers, uh, with designed fibers uh, strength, design fiber length, design fiber surface, design fiber diameter, and so on and so forth. Um, and then there is there are design there there is um, a replacement of the cost aggregates. So the size of the aggregates in there are relatively small, and the dimensions are also controlled by the micromechanics theory. So how it works. Um, is that it takes advantage of what really exists in, mo in, in most concrete material, and that is there is a lot of unhydrated cement grains uh, in the material. Uh, we use a water binder ratio that is relatively low, and so that not all the cement grains are used up in the initial hydration of the material. Now, when the Micro cracks form, it forms these new surfaces that exposes the unhydrated cement grains. And if there is water migrating through these cracks, then it reacts with these unhydrated cement grains. And then it forms a binder that binds the two crack faces together. In the case of bendable concrete, we design the material to have enough uh, chemical ingredients um, the anhydrous cement grains, the porcelains inside, and other stuff um, that promotes healing, and at the same time combines that with the very tight crack width. And those two combinations uh, allows the material to self-heal. And actually what motivates the development, the invention of bendable concrete in the first place is this very severe type of collapse uh, failure of buildings and other structures during extreme loading, uh, like earthquakes, which happens around the world. So in summary, there are two major advantages that come to my mind uh, over normal concrete, bendable concrete enhances service life, um, reduce maintenance cost, um, and also enhances safety of our infrastructures. In these kind of applications, the cost comes from longer term savings. In other words, reducing the repair frequency um, and therefore you are reducing the cost over the life of the bridge deck. Now in the case of the buildings in Japan, um, the cost comes on day one. 
And the reason is that, and, and I'm, what I'm referring to is the install cost, not necessarily the long-term cost. So the install cost of the buildings are lower than, um, <clears throat> than uh, the previous design of similar buildings. And the reason why they can achieve that is because by taking advantage of the uh, ductility and energy absorption capability of bendable concrete in the core of these buildings, they were able to remove a lot of previous uh, anti-seismic devices that, are, that were required to keep those buildings safe during seismic events. And by removing those uh, anti-seismic devices, these buildings are much simpler to build, uh, they cost less to build, um, and they in fact um, have larger square footage because they don't need the huge columns anymore. Uh, that were integral to those buildings before the use of bendable concrete.